this is the second part of a Marcus Stern Reporter interview with uh, Professor Steve Keen from the University of Western yeah. Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, so in our first part, we went through uh, how to um, basically set up a simple economics dynamic model, if we put it that way. Mm -hmm. And now we want to add some more, let's say, elements to the more dynamics and really see how complicated can we make it. And uh, so, yeah, please. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I'll start with the, that was the physical model of the economy. What I will now is a strictly monetary model. Of course, you can and combine the two, and I have combined the two, but just showing the two halves and how you bring them together. So, of course, to have a, to have a monetary model with prices, mm -hmm. rather have, have a price model, you have to have money. One of the huge mistakes in neoclassical is to try to get a model of prices without money. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying let's start with money straight away. And we, what we do is have a banking sector view of the economy completely. What money is, is the liabilities of the banking sector to the non-bank part section of the economy. So we trade in the liability to the banking system. And that's why an even expansion of the assets and liabilities of the banking system has economic significance because it's expanding liability, it gives expanding level of money and expanding demand. So I'm going to build a very simple model here. Let's say we have, um, I'm a bit slow because I've got the simulation, the last one being exported as we talk. I have one called loans. I may, you know, that's how fast my computer can handle this. Loans, and give an initial value for the loans of say 100. And notice the row sum currently becomes positive 100. So I've got to add in here, for example, uh, liability, which would be the firm sector. And the loan was to the firm sector. So the balance I'd have to have minus 100 shown there, which is, from the, the bank's point of view, the liability, you show it as a negative. And that one will give you a row sum of zero. And then we have workers as another who have bank accounts with the with the bank. And of course, that's also a liability to the banking system. And finally, the simplest thing to have the equity of the bank being stored in a safe. That's all done there. Let's look at the simplest possible operations would be paying interest on that debt. So if that is, if that's, I'll just call it, hang on. interest payment. So there'd be a transfer of money, in that case, from this account, INT, this is the amount, to minus INT over here. Notice I've got to click twice, by the way, a little bug at the moment. I've got to click twice to identify a cell properly. Now, that is now, ah, because it's actually in run mode, that's why it's running so slow, you've got to stop it. The system is now set up to use the table as a display device. Okay. So it was actually displaying while it was actually it was simulating while I was changing it. So you can see the, the actual numerical output. Yeah, I'll, I'll show that in a moment, and we'll bring that up. That's actually a useful feature I forgot was actually being added since the last time I demoed the program. The interest payments are being made. Uh, I'm going to ignore deposit interest, but I can include that as well. Let's have say now that the reason the firm borrowed the money was to hire workers to work in a factory. So I now have wages being paid from here as an inflow, which is shown as minus wages into the bank accounts of workers. And then you have consumption by the bankers. So I'll have that being a payment from here of cons B, which comes over here as minus cons B. And then have consumption by the workers, which again, the same sort of story. We'll make this a credit and debit rather than negative and positive, which is less confusing. I think we haven't done that yet, but we will. Okay, that's a very basic system. Now notice, let's just put that table at the top there. Notice we have the flows coming in through the left-hand side of the banking icon and the system, the accounts, coming out the bottom. I want to define this. If I right-click and choose copy, I can drag them away. I could actually define them right next to the thing, but it's just needed to move them away over here. So I want to, I want to define, hang on, what happened there? Copy. I want to define interest, wages, consumption by bankers, and consumption by workers. Okay, well, interest payments are quite clearly going to be interest payments on the loans. So I put a copy of the loans and bring that over here. And then I need to multiply loans by the rate of interest on loans. So I need a constant here. I can make that a variable as well. These things are changeable later. Let's say the rate of interest on loans is 5%. If I then bring a multiply block, and multiply those, hang on, multiply those together them up. I've now defined the interest flows. Now wages, I'll simply make those a function of the amount of money in the firm's account. So several times a year the amount of money in the account turns over to pay wages. So let's just give it a value. Let's call that W and give it a value say of 3. And 
and then consumption by bankers are based on the amount of money in the safe. Again, you can make other, other things be the, the functions here. So I now want a, 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 a consumption rate by bank by, by work by bankers. And let's say bankers can turn over their accounts once a year. And the same thing for workers. And say that they turn over their accounts 26 times a year, which is saying that they have less money, so they spend on a fortnightly basis. Okay. Okay. Having done all that, I've now defined a basic financial system. You know, well, how many minutes? Mm -hmm. I'll just copy that and bring that. Oh, have it, no, I don't want to divide. I want to multiply by. So just delete that. Pardon me. And delete that. I normally use what are called time constants, but it's just faster to use these parameter values here instead. Okay, and let's wire all that up. Now, normally I knock near classical economists to make a presentation, but now I'll have a bit of a go at post Keynesians because there was a 20 year debate in post Keynesian economics over whether it was possible for firms to borrow money, pay interest on it, and make a profit. And the basic conclusion was no, they couldn't, because if you borrowed $100, which is what I've got turning up here, then you would expect to pay 5% interest, which I've also got. Then banks got $100 in, they had to pay 105 out their accounts would necessarily decline over time to zero. And I said, look, guys, you're making a simple stock flow confusion. The loan is an amount of money, $100. The uh, income interest payment you have to pay is, is money per unit of time. Profit is money per unit of time. And you might make three or $400 turnover out of $100 in cash, make $300 in, in, in wages, $100 in profit, pay $5, no problem. And it, I, I still couldn't convince people until I finally could build a simulation, which I originally did in MathCAD, but I'll just show you here, I haven't put it all together. So according to that long-running uh, dispute in economic theory, that should have loans remaining constant, because there's nothing happening, as you can see, in the loans column. But I should also have, ultimately, you know, this running down towards zero. Well, let's simulate. I'll just check the uh, simulation parameters are OK. Let's simulate. And we get a flat line. The amount of money in the account stabilises. So the economy is turning over regularly. Now, I need to explain. And notice all the values are turning up here. Wages, $256, say, million dollars per annum. Consumption by, by bankers, 4.8. Interest payments, 5. Uh, and so profit is clearly being made out of the system. And I could actually, by doing a bit of mathematical logic, explain what profits are. If I had wages being, uh, say, 70% of GDP, then profit would be 30%. Okay, so it would be a fraction of what you're seeing there as wages. But that's quite a simple simulation of a model that works quite successfully. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a breakdown. And this model will stabilise. Yeah, it is already stabilised. See the amount of money in the firm's account and the, 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 the flow of interest The flow of interest is stabilised, the flow of wages is stabilised, the flow of consumption you can see slowly is converging to what bankers are earning, the flow of consumption by workers is converging to what they're earning and so on. These sorts of things, and notice how fast it's flashing here. That's... We have to change all the update routines to make it much faster again as a case of needing time to get the software written. But that's building a basic financial system. Yeah, so let's say we want to add you know, one touch of realism and just put some kind of business cycle. So let's say we have some kind of, a, let's say, a supply shock of sorts, you know, oil prices increasing and whatnot. Can uh, we do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, again, it's a case of <clears throat> adding to the structure. What I've got there is just a straight model of um, simply a financial system. I made the... I made the, the the physical side of the economy implicit I had last time round. But what I'd do to make that work is I'd come inside the table here, and we're, rather than defining wages as being firm, the, the firms times the amount of money there, um, I'll just delete this. I've got to delete one at a time here. But the, the way that I have done this, though I'd need to spend a lot more time to put it together, and obviously doing a live demo I could make an obvious easy error here, but I'd have, I'd have the wage rate, As a, vari as a variable, I'll go, I'll go, I won't bother giving a value. I'll just put a wage rate multiplied by workers. Have those, multiply those together. Now, of course, I haven't defined them, so it won't work right now. But that's what I've fundamentally done. So I've gone from having a, a monetary value being set by the, the, the... Saying the flow of wages depends on what's in the bank account, the saying, well, that actually depends upon what the current level of wages and workers are, mm -hmm. having done that, then I've then tied it up with the physical economy, so I'd then have the wages then letting you know what the, so the demand for workers was, and then feed that into the Phillips curve argument and so on. So, so that's where you get the, <coughs> so the dynamics into this system as yeah. well. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Mm. Well, thank you very much for your time. That was a 
brilliant uh, explanation of it. Let's see how we model things wrongly currently. No, no, no. The thing is so easy to do it properly. Well, it took a while to design this this sort of approach, but the whole idea is to try to make it as straightforward and, and intuitive and real, and then show that with dynamic modelling, rather than having to make more and more ridiculous assumptions to hang on to your initial starting point of believing everything happens in equilibrium, uh, you actually make more... You, you start with a relatively unrealistic framework and you then modify it to include realism, and you get a richer model. And that's the way we should be moving in economics. I couldn't agree more. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much for your time. Welcome.